Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're going to be going into the third part in chapter four, which discusses sex link linkage. There'll be one more video in chapter four coming up after this where we'll be working on example problems, making sure we fully understand sex link traits and how to do Punnett squares related to them. But first, the discovery of sex linkage. So discovered here by Thomas Hunt Morgan. Uh, so very, very important person when we get to chapter seven and we start talking about linked genes his group did all the work on gene linkage as well so here up until this point if we talk about typical mendelian genetics you know you have the parent cross where you know you have the two parents and you cross uh, two true breeders you get the f1 generation that's all heterozygous you do an f1 cross and then you get that three to one ratio for the phenotypes so yeah that was you know great but Something that uh, Thomas Hunt Morgan realized in his group, he worked with fruit flies, fruit flies known as Drosophila, Drosophila melagonaster, uh, and he discovered that genes are located on sex chromosomes. So how did he discover this? Well, he did some crosses, and he realized these crosses of these fruit flies were sex-dependent. So he realized there was a, a relationship between whether or not a, a phenotype expresses itself depending on the sex of that particular fruit fly. So an example here, what he did were known as reciprocal crosses. I introduced reciprocal crosses way back in one of the earlier videos, just going over terminology. Uh, so here, reciprocal crosses yielded different results with sex linkage. So what he did, remember a reciprocal cross is when you change the sexes of the individual. So let's say we have a female, red, and male, white. So right here would be one cross, so a female, red, and uh, male, white. Now this is referring to eyes, where for eyes, for the fruit flies, white is the mutant type or the recessive version, uh, whereas red eyes is the wild type phenotype. So this was one cross here. When this cross happened, all the F1 generations were all red. So if they were all red in F1, it's, you know, these ones that say this was, you know, red and this was white, they'd be all red here too. So that's, that's working fine. Uh, but then to do the reciprocal cross, you do the backwards of what we have here. So you have a female white fly cross a male red fly. Remember, these are the um, symbols for male and female here. Now, in this generation, the phenotypes were different. And this is where he determined that you know, genes are located on these sex chromosomes. So in this one, um, we, had female, we had red females and white males. And that was interesting. They should all be red if it was you know, typical Mendelian and they were on the autosomes but these are on the sex chromosomes. And we, we know that there are particular genes located on the sex chromosomes now, and that they can be mapped. And um, well, we'll get to the mapping of them later, but right now we're just discovering that genes are located on the sex chromosomes. And this is you know called sex linkage. So you can have linked genes on the X chromosome and linked genes on the Y chromosome. Remember, just as a review, XX is female, XY is male. So X linkage was discovered here in this fruit fly cross because of this unique combination here where these two F1 generations did not match. I could show the F2s uh, here, but the F1s are the key. The fact that because a reciprocal cross was done here should yield the same results, but they don't. Um, and it's sex dependent. So this leads us into X linkage then. So X linkage is defined by a non-sexual trait on the X chromosome. And it's important to note that this is a non-sexual trait. So on, on the Y chromosome, we'll get into Y chromosomes down here a little bit more, but there's a lot of genes that are specific for male development. But here, X linkage is referring to a non-sexual trait on the X chromosome. So notations for this, uh, you can write them different ways. So, you know, you can write wild types, you know, X plus, you can write them with, you know, capital lowercase letters for dominant and recessive, but you typically write, you know, the gene arrangement with the allele as a superscript. Uh, and if it's a male, so it'd be XA 
Y if this was the particular gene here, whereas if it was a recessive version, you'd write it like that. Note that you don't put anything on the Y because the gene isn't located on the Y. So remember, males are hemizygous. Hemizygous meaning only having one of the chromosomes. So here you can have X-linked recessive traits. Example of these include androgen insensitivities, red-green color blindness, and hemophilia. Now, one important thing to note, because these are X-linked recessive, males, since they're hemizygous, only require one version. Whereas if a female was a carrier, this female would not show the disease. Much easier for a male to show the disease. So X-linked recessive traits are more common in males, and it's inherited from the mother. And we could do a, you know, a quick example of a cross here. So a quick uh, Punnett square over here. Let's say the father, now let's say the father was normal and then the female had it. So in this case, if we just look at the male part of the Punnett square here, and let's say the female was heterozygous. So this male would then have it, this male would not. The females over here, we don't need to worry about those yet, but this is just showing how it's always inherited from the mother to the son. And that's the important thing to note when you're analyzing uh, pedigree charts coming up in a future chapter. And another thing here, what about if it's X-linked dominant? Because you can have X-linked dominant traits. An example here is fragile X syndrome. This is when you can get a deletion on one of the uh, bottom parts of the X chromosome. Now, these ones are more common in females and they can be inherited from either parent. Because if it's dominant, it doesn't really matter. Um, but because females then only need one version, more likely in the females. Now, they probably equal probability in the males, but it's typically referred to as more common in females. Now, uh, so that's all X-linkage, and like I said, we're going to be doing a, a problem in a video. Ne the next videos going to be posted are going to be example problems going over how to do these because you you can do them, you know, just like typical Punnett squares to look at the chances of offspring having it or being carriers themselves, and that becomes important. Being able to do those crosses very fast when analyzing pedigree charts. So I'll make a separate video going over a few examples right after this one. Okay, so next up is Y-linkage. These are known as holandric genes. So if every if you ever hear something is a holandric gene, it's only found on the Y chromosome, so it's specific to male function. And a unique thing about this is that it's it's not dominant or recessive. Um, there's only one that exists because you can't have one that really cancels this out. So there's you don't really describe it as dominant or recessive because you either have it or you don't. And again, it's only in males because it's Y-linked. And because it's only in males, it can only be inherited from the father. The mother does not give any Y chromosomes. And there are a few examples of uh, Y-link diseases, but I won't get into uh, any of them here. And the last little thing I wanted to, ref so this was a short little video going over sex linkage. And again, the you know importance of this one is then relating it to how to work the problems. And this is you know the background for doing pedigrees then as well. But first here, I wanted to bring up ZW linkage. Remember ZW linkage is it's what you have in birds and it's the opposite. There are Z and W linked genes. So they do exist uh, and they follow the same rules as the XXXY system. Now remember that it's opposite though. So ZZ, ZW, ZZ is male, ZW is female. And that's the opposite. So everything for this one is the opposite of what we just talked about up here. So, you know, Y linkage is only, or W linkage in this case, is only in female birds or anything that has a Z and W system. Uh, and then X linked recessive would be more common in females because of that hemizygous form here. So just wanted to make a note that it's just the same thing, but the opposite. And again, like I said, this is a short little video today, um, but I will be then doing example problems, going over this in more detail, and I will see you all in that video. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.